Welcome to uh, LATimes.com and our Google Plus Hangout today. Uh, we're live in the LA Times newsroom, and of course, we're talking about the Mars rover Curiosity and its uh, spectacular landing last night at on the uh, surface of Mars. And we're here to talk about this today, and also looking forward about what we're going to information we're going to get from Curiosity. And we're joined now by Adam. Steltzner from JPL, as well as by Scott Gold from the LA Times, who's at JPL, has reporting for the last 48 hours from there about the big landing. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Good to be here. Okay. Well, Adam, Thank you. let's start with you now. You were very, very intimately involved in this whole landing uh, last yeah. night. And can you kind of just describe what it was like, those last hour, and of course, those seven seconds where you kind of waited to find out what was going to happen? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, you know, uh, well, it was incredible. It was a, a, a life-changing experience. Um, to be part of a fantastic team which we assembled to do this job and worked long and hard over the better part of a decade to do it, uh, and then to um, see it all come to pass last night as we really couldn't have even imagined in our wildest dreams it would go as well as it did. Uh, it ends up being that we had a, a great landing night, and all of our predictions, we tend to be conservative on our predictions, and we tend to be, you know, um, uh, concerned that we don't want to be overly opti op optimistic, and, uh, and in the end, we were too conservative. Everything was just fantastic. Uh, and so... The seven minutes of the actual travel through the atmosphere to the surface were nerve-wracking, very anxiety-provoking. As you probably saw on videos, I could not sit still. I, I had to pace. But uh, the payoff is, is indescribable. How many years have you been working on uh, waiting for that moment? Um, personally, I, uh, I started working on MSL, uh, initially actually designing the rover, um, nine years ago. And I transitioned to uh, leading the EDL team, uh, the Intercept Landing team, about, um, about eight years ago, seven and a half years ago, something like that. Right, and so being in that control room last night with all your colleagues, the people who had built and planned this thing, what was the energy like? We saw, obviously, videotape of it and sort of the live stream, but inside the actual control room, what, was, what were the emotions and what was it like? Well, during, the, during entry, descent, and landing, there's a lot of focus within the team. There's things for us to look at, to watch telemetry, so if a problem were to arise, we'd understand it. There's nothing we could do about it, but we'd at least be able to understand what had happened. Um, and so there's a lot of focus, occasionally broken by celebration. You know, a lot of a lot of stuff has to go right during those seven minutes of terror for us to make it safely to the surface. And um, for some of the key milestones, like opening up the parachute or starting our rocket engines, uh, the team lets go for a second and it erupts into a little bit of, of applause. Mm -hmm. Right, and now you, you obviously and your team had gone over the contingencies many, many times. You played this out through simulations. Was there kind of one point during last night where you were kind of at your most nervous, the part where you feel it felt like this is the do or die moment? Um, actually, uh, during, during the better part of entry, descent, and landing, no. It was coming by really fast, and it was looking really nominal at the very beginning. When we just started to kiss the atmosphere, we got a, um, a tone, a, a code back from the, the spacecraft that its attitude, its orientation with respect to the atmosphere was out of bounds. And that was because I had, because things hadn't started to go right yet, that really gave me pause to be concerned. Uh, but then very rapidly, uh, 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 we got all sorts of telemetry that said everything was right. So uh, it was actually the only moment I had, uh, other than the pervasive anxiety uh, across the whole event, but the only moment I had for some concern from what I was seeing was in the very beginning. Right, right. And so tell, tell us what happened after the live stream ended. Obviously, we saw a lot of hugs, a lot of cheers. 
What were the next few hours like after sort of uh, the crowd's death out of JPL last night, this morning? Okay, yeah, what we did is uh, we went back to the, um, to the new control, the control room, right? We had landed Curiosity from something called the CMSA, the Cruise Mission Support Area, or the control room for Cruise and EDL. Um, at about 11 o'clock last night, we transitioned control of Curiosity from mission control, cruise mission control, to surface mission control. And after the press conference, after the Ustream ended, we all went back to surface mission control and looked at a couple of more images that were coming down from the next pass of the Odyssey orbiter. After that, um, we, we adjourned to, uh, to, a, to a spot together and, uh, and just enjoyed each other's company and had uh, a, a celebratory toast or two. <laughs> and did you get any sleep last night? I did actually sleep. Um, it wasn't very much. It, it was a few hours in the, it, just before it started to get light. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? Nights like this don't come around very frequently, so you've got to drink deep of the cup. Yeah. Well, Scott, let's turn to you for a minute. Now, you've been covering this the last few uh, weeks and really been, been kind of embedded there the last few days. And we talk about the landing, but the landing's really just the beginning of this mission. And can you kind of describe what the science expects to get from this and kind of what the next few weeks and months are going to be like for the curiosity? Yeah, well, I think there's a couple points to make about that. Uh, the first is that the scientists who are running this thing have really tried to stress in the last couple of days that, the, that this is, uh, sh should not be viewed by the public as a sprint. This is not unlike some of the previous Mars missions uh, meant to last for 90 days, even though those missions, of course, did not last for 90 days, but uh, nominally they were supposed to last 90 days. This one uh, has a, a, a minimum of a two-year life and, and could very easily go uh, quite a bit beyond that and possibly twice that or even more. And um, so, so the scientists really want to take their time. The ultimate target here is to go to this mountain, which is in the middle of the crater. And the mountain is called Mount Sharp. And that mountain has uh, slopes that have been eroded over time, uh, possibly by wind, possibly by water. And they contain, similar to the Grand Canyon, a preserved record of the evolution of Mars. And this is uh, terrifically exciting for the scientists who are involved in the mission. But it could be as long as a year before this uh, spacecraft actually gets there, before the robot actually gets there. What we're going to be writing about today for tomorrow morning's newspaper and for uh, today's uh, website is that uh, not only did Curiosity stick its landing in, in pretty spectacular fashion last night, but it happened in a portion of the landing target that was really ideal from a scientific perspective. Curiosity landed on top of a geological feature called an alluvial fan, which is essentially a large plain containing uh, deposits of rocks and dirt that geologists think is uh, cool. I think that's the official uh, scientific term. Um, and uh, the idea here is that if Curiosity is searching for the ingredients of life, for evidence that Mars either is or, or was habitable, uh, this is a great place to start. So before Curiosity, in other words, sprints off to the mountaintop, uh, well, not the mountaintop, they're going to go up just a poor portion of the mountain, but before they sprint off to the mountain, uh, they're going to have a look around where they are right now, and they're pretty excited about that, too. Well, Scott, you, you sort of alluded to this, that really this mission um, is really about looking at, the, as you say in today's story, the building blocks of life. Can you kind of explain a big picture about some of the data they hope to glean from uh, this rover. So Mars has been studied. It's a very difficult place to send a, a spacecraft to, but it has been studied in an enormous amount of detail, either on the ground or from the air. And uh, scientists already know uh, pretty definitively that Mars once had surface water or uh, once had a watery past that made it in some respects similar to how the Earth is today. Now, that's a, a critical thing to know because at least on Earth, at least uh, when it comes to life as we know it, 
there uh, is no such thing as a liquid water environment that does not sustain at least some form of life, at least microbial life. But that's only one ingredient of life. You also need an energy source, and then you need some sort of a structure, some sort of a, a, uh, an organic molecule. And um, that, it's those other building blocks of life that curiosity will be uh, specializing in. Curiosity has the ability to actually ingest soil on Mars, bring it into a roving geochemistry laboratory that's inside the spacecraft, conduct really detailed analysis of the minerals uh, and, the, and the compounds that are contained in that soil and then send the results of those experiments back home 154 million miles away. Well, Adam, let's get back to you since we have to go in a little while. Now, Adam, uh, what, 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 is, what is your job now? You've obviously spent literally years preparing for this landing. What do, where do you go from here in terms of uh, your role in this from here on out? Um, I go into the unemployment line. <laughs> uh, I don't know what my next job is. Uh, I will spend some time with the team uh, reconstructing what happened last night uh, uh, at a part-time level. And uh, beside that, I don't know what the future has for me. When you, when you think, even though your role with this is now over with, um, I assume you'll be following pretty closely what Curiosity brings, brings back because you and your team, you're the guys who got them here. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and some of my best friends are waiting to rove around, you know, drive her around and, and uh, do the science that we came to Gale Crater to do. So uh, I will be watching. I'll be having lunch with all the guys. And I may do some, I may help out on the surface from time to time. But uh, from the, the next big thing, I don't know about yet. Well, Adam, congratulations to you and your team. It was wonderful to hear you uh, talk about this. And uh, thank you for coming in and talking. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you. And Scott, thank you for coming on and for, uh, for uh, getting back to work now on the big stories for tomorrow's paper. It's great to have you, too. Thanks for having me. Okay, and thank you very much for watching here on LATimes.com. Stay with us uh, through the afternoon and tomorrow for the latest on the Mars rover Curiosity, and uh, thank you for watching.